Welcome back to another GTN Coaches Corner where we answer all your triathlon training questions. Yeah, today we're going to be looking at triathlon tips for doing a triathlon on a budget. And triathlon training for a teenager. How to complement your swim, bike and run training. And how to train between triathlon events. And whether you should hire a bike for a race. It's time to crack on. Well, just before we get into the questions, remember to click on the globe and subscribe. And if you have a question that you want answered, all you have to do is use the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner beneath this video or any of our other videos. So let's get into your questions, starting with this one from Rebecca Harrison, and she says, hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. I'm really new to a triathlon and looking to compete next season for the first time, but I'm overwhelmed by the never-ending list of gear. I literally only have a swimsuit, a pair of goggles, and a pair of two small running shoes. Obviously, I need to get a bike, but how would you prioritize the rest of the list? And what are some of your tips for getting stuff at an affordable price? Well, we actually did a very affordable triathlon just the other day in our eBay triathlon. I'm not sure you should probably go that cheap. No, I mean, that was all a bit of tongue in cheek, but it might give you some inspiration. But I mean, taking tips from that, we would really suggest just looking at the secondhand market because triathletes love new things. And as a result, they do tend to get rid of their less new things that are still in very good working condition. So whether that's a Facebook marketplace, it's eBay or your local tri club, just if you start to spread the word and get to know other triathletes, you'll be amazed at how people quite often have something sat around that they're like, oh yeah, I'll sell that for a little bit of money. So do start with a network and have a look. And there's a lot of really good secondhand stuff. But when it it comes to bikes and helmets do check for the safety i'm not sure how safe james's helmet was in in that that's fine the duct tape was holding it together no problem uh you can also borrow equipment the problem with borrowing equipment obviously is that you can't borrow it indefinitely so training with that borrowed equipment can be a bit difficult uh, borrowing equipment for race day only obviously you're then using something new on race day so you do want to slowly build up your arsenal of stuff that you need but if you do look at that ebay triathlon video you will see a pretty good list of the basics that you need i wouldn't go as cheap as the bikes we went but uh, you you will get a good idea of just the basics of what you need to get through your triathlon and then from there you can start building it as you get some more money and as you find some deals on ebay and etc yeah and i think it's about like starting with the basics so you will need a helmet you'll need that and that's a safety thing and it will last you for a long time so i would suggest investing in it but you can cycle in running shoes but then the next step would probably be to get bike shoes and learn to use cleats if you're not there so it's kind of a step-by-step -step process and that'll give you time to get used to that kit and yeah the more you get into the sport the more you probably naturally want to invest anyway i will advise you to immediately get rid of the two small running shoes mm. those are not doing you any favors injuries are coming your way that should be your first thing that you get the correct size running shoes yeah definitely well well, our next question, we have this from Stefan Colangelo, who says, Hi, guys. I just wanted to comment and say that I started this program eight weeks ago after doing the Couch to 5K. Yesterday, I completed my first sprint distance triathlon, and it was an amazing experience. You guys changed my life forever. Oh, wow. Where are we going here? <laughs> With your content. Thanks so much. Okay, well, let's get to the question here. My plan is to do a 70.3 next summer. My question is, how does one train between training plans? I reckon four months for 70 Point three is good preparation time. Look forward to an answer in the next episode. Well, yeah, I mean, you basically, four months will be enough as long as you're doing stuff in between. And just because you've got this set training plan doesn't mean you have to forget about training for triathlon in that period. And yes, maybe you've been following plans. It's hard to know how to structure, but you can use that space as a freedom to work on the areas that have been maybe something that you were lacking. Maybe it's your running that needs a bit more work and you can still keep the bike and the swim ticking over and maybe follow a, a run plan for that period or for any of the other sports. So you can have a bit more fun and not be so structured but try and work on the weaker ones or you could be a little bit lazy and work on the ones you enjoy most which is something that I'm definitely guilty of doing. <laughs> yeah you can you can keep fit in those in-between times and the fitter you start a program the better the program will will adapt you to your actual race. So you do want to be fairly fit when you start the program. You don't have to start at zero and start at the couch, even if that's what the program is designed for. Uh, you need to be doing something. What I would generally say is if you do have a program starting in say four months before your event, take the first couple of weeks of that program and repeat them again and again and again. You can add in slightly longer runs or rides or do more fun things. You don't have to stick to it rigidly, but that'll give you a basic structure that you can build to. And then that structure is also already kind of built into your life when it comes to that four month crunch time where you wanna actually start focusing on the race itself. So yeah, definitely do something in between the programs. If you've got a 12 week program for one race and a 16 week program for another one, that gap in between, you do wanna do something. Don't just sit on the couch and watch Netflix, uh, but what you do should kind of just build you towards that. And it should be low stress, uh, low, low focus, mm -hmm. so that you are 
fresh and ready to start those programs when they come around. You don't want to be exhausted and overworked when it comes to starting that program. That'll come later on. Yeah, and I think mentally as well. So like, for you know, go and make your training social. So do bike rides where you stop for coffee cake or even do some other sports that are still going to build your aerobic base. You don't necessarily have to stick to swim, bike and run. Strength and conditioning is another area if, you're, if you enjoy doing that that you could work on or maybe even enter some events in that period that aren't triathlon. So it could be a sportif. So you want to do a, a certain distance on your bike or you want to go and do a fun trail half marathon. There's lots of other ways that can keep you stimulated and keep you interested as you're going. So many things you can do to yeah. train for triathlon. Okay. <laughs> Our next question is from Rado Stuyan, and he says, hashtag DTN Coaches Corner. I've been training for the last eight months for a 70.3 and was thinking of hiring a bike at the event. What would your advice be for traveling with the bike versus hiring? The 70.3 is in Barcelona. Okay. This is a, a good question because people do consider this. Mm. Uh, the advantage of hiring a bike, of course, is that you can hire the best bike for race weekend and have a really, really good bike for race day. Uh, but there are a lot of disadvantages to this. Firstly, no matter how much you tinker with it and measure and perfectly measure, you are not going to feel exactly the same on a new bike or a different bike than your own personal bike that you've trained on. So there's going to be some sacrifice there. And any time that you save and dismantling your bike, packing it into a box and rebuilding on the other side is going to be spent getting your new higher bike to fit you perfectly for race day or get you to exactly the same fit as the, race, as the bike that you've been training on. So you're not going to save any time. You may save a little bit of money, uh, but you're going to have to pay a fair amount of money to hire that bike and the bike box fees for, for uh, airlines are not actually that steep. So you're not really going to save very much on that front either. We would suggest, I think both of us, travel with your own bike. Uh, learn how to take the handlebars off and take the pedals off and pack it into a box safely so that there's no risk of damage. Uh, invest in a decent bike box and then travel with your bike. You will be much more comfortable on race day. You decrease the risk of things going wrong and you not being in exactly the same position that you used to, uh, which can lead to all kinds of problems like cramps, etc. on race day. I would suggest take your own bike, learn how to do that. Yeah, I think we're on the same page. I'd be interested to know the costings, actually, and if you've done the budget and looked at whether, if that's what's actually encouraging you to do it, because, yeah, there's the appeal of a fancy bike, but, I mean, even if you are riding an old bike at home, that gap is going to be even different, and it might feel fine on the bike, but then it will come and bite you on the run, especially for a distance of 70.3, because you've got a half marathon at the end of it, so you, you might feel totally fine, and then you'll start to get some injury afterwards, so I would be, or beyond that, you know, the days later, you can sometimes pick up niggles from not being in the right position, so I would... Yeah, go there with caution, but obviously some people, it, there's a market for it, so people must enjoy or must come back to using hire bikes. So I, I'm intrigued to know if anyone has done it. Let us know in the comments section below. Yeah, the difference would of course be how long you can get there before the race and how much time you're going to spend on that bike. Uh, but obviously, if you're going to spend that much time there before the race, it's worthwhile taking your bike anyway. So Yeah. All right. Well, Callum Notum has this. Quick question. Apart from swimming, cycling and running exercises, what else can help? For example, how many core sessions would you recommend a week? Plank, squats, press-ups, weight sessions. I don't want to bulk up the legs and then sink in the water. Well, Callum, I don't think you need to worry too much about bulking up your legs and sinking in the water. It's not as black and white as that and your stronger legs will help you with your cycling. But I think there's a much bigger uh, question here of how to complement your training. And yes, strength and conditioning is, you're spot on with that. There's so many things that you can do that will cross over to all three sports. And I would recommend when you're going to do, look at doing a gym program that you try to make all of those exercises as functional as possible. Squats are brilliant. They're going to cross over to your running and to your cycling and lots of upper body body work and a lot of core work and I would suggest for running if you're doing things that are single um, single sided so single leg squats single leg um, deadlifts for example everything that's going to strengthen your core but also strengthen your legs and because it's single leg you're not going to be able to be doing such huge um, amounts of lifting so you really won't be worrying about the bulking but when it comes to the bulking I think so many people and quite often girls as well worry about this of going to the gym and if they're lifting they're going to get really big and start to look huge but I mean, right now I'm not going to the gym, but I have done gym for years. And unless you're going to the gym and you're smashing huge plates of food straight afterwards and you're going to the gym sort of four or five times a week, you really don't need to worry about that. As triathletes and endurance athletes, we are doing enough aerobic exercise that you just it's not going to happen. No. Gym work is definitely going to help strength work, as Heather said. Another thing you might want to look at doing, and people tend to neglect and can have big performance benefits, is stretching. Now, this mm -hmm. is something you can do alongside your core session or your, your gym session. Uh, 
stretching, your flexibility, particularly your shoulders for your swimming and then your hip flexors for your running uh, and your biking can make a big difference to your performance. You'll find essentially it's almost like free speed or free power because you have a bigger range of motion. You're more efficient in that range of motion. So look at spending some time. It, it, the A-type personality doesn't really like this because it doesn't feel like you're really working. You don't get your heart rate up or anything, but it does pay dividends. So spend, if you have extra time after your swimming, biking and running, getting that flexibility to its absolute peak, particularly for the shoulders and the hips uh, mm. for, your, for your biking and running. And doing something that encompasses all of that is yoga, which um, is something I don't do enough of and I do find, I mean, I don't know if James has ever tried yoga, but it's much harder than it looks and it will be working you to be strong in those flexible positions and that is what is key. So it's having the mobility but the strength in that range so oh, yeah I feel a GTN video coming soon. oh I want to see James doing <laughs> yoga now oh, <laughs> thanks dear. for that inspiration <laughs> okay our next question is from Elias Esterbrook and they say hashtag GTN coaches corner I am 14 year old athlete aspiring to go pro well cool big dreams I train around 14 to 16 hours a week but I'm constantly worried whether I'm doing too little to go pro or too much so I get injured I do two to three strength and conditioning workouts a week, uh, but I'm still worried uh, that I'll get injured. Any tips? Okay, well, that does sound like quite a workload for a 14-year-old, and you do need to be careful. Uh, there is not too much benefit in overdoing it when you're young. Uh, what you most likely are opening yourself up for is burnout later on uh, and fatigue. Your body is doing a whole lot of growing and developing at the same time that you are trying to get it ready for a triathlon, and you need to give it time and space and rest to do that growing and developing. You don't want to be pushing it too hard. That said, you also don't want to give your competitors who also want to go pro an advantage uh, when they're working really hard at 14 years old. So you do need to find that balance. What we would say is what you mostly want to focus on at 14 year old, if you are looking to be a triathlon pro down the line, is your swimming and your mm -hmm. running. So your swimming, you need to obviously be doing the miles and you can do more miles. It's non weight bearing. It's not gonna really affect bones and joints that are growing and developing too much. And of course, you will get better at swimming the more you do at a younger age. So that is definitely something you wanna work on and spend most of your time doing. Running, you wanna work on your form for running. Mm -hmm. So you wanna become an efficient and a fast runner, uh, but without doing too many miles. Running is of course high impact and you don't want to be doing too much of that on growing bones and ligaments and tendons. So make sure your running program is very specific for your age. It is working on the right things like your efficiency, but it's not something that's actually going to hurt you or injure you. So keep the hours low, keep the quality high on the running. And then the bike, it's semi-weight bearing, so you can do a fair amount of it, and you do want to get your skills up on the bike. This is something that people do tend to neglect, and then when they're 18 and they suddenly have to go into a crit style uh, triathlon where it's draft legal and they have to throw themselves around corners, they're very scared or not very good at it. Uh, so work on that and your cycling at a younger age. Uh, and I think that probably ticks all the boxes as far as what you need to be working on. The strength and conditioning, of course, is a good kind mm -hmm. of base for all of this and you do need to be building that strong core that everything else can grow and develop from. Uh, but again, strength and conditioning, as we said in a previous question, for triathlon doesn't need to be big weights. It doesn't need to be high, high energy. It needs to be rep repetitions of low weight and it needs to be really controlled so that you're not risking any injury. Yeah, and you can add fun elements into that, doing balance exercises like standing on one leg and throwing and catching and coordination is all just going to help making you an all-rounded athlete as well. But I would say at this point for the mental aspect, make sure you keep your training fun so you're doing it with people that you enjoy, you're making, mixing it all up and you're, you know, you're wanting to go to the next session. If you're not, then you need to probably have a bit of a back off because you're balancing schoolwork, I'd imagine, as well. And finally, to so make sure you really keep on top of your nutrition because your body is going to be using so much energy and you want to make sure not just you're getting in the calories but also that you're getting in the right range of all the food so your body can stay well and continue to get stronger and as you grow you're it's just demanding that much more. Well, thanks for the question. And if you guys have your own questions, remember, leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching this week and we'll see you again next week.